I'd like to welcome everybody to the Medical Marijuana and Wellness Webinar Series. Uh, tonight's topic will be Medical Marijuana 101, uh, Basics and Terminology. Uh, and this is a webinar that many people request because they hear about medical cannabis, they don't know what it is, they wonder what medical marijuana is, what's the link between cannabis and marijuana. There's a lot of basics that, that people are really questioning. Medical marijuana is not complicated. It just has a set of terminology that's different from many, many other things. And whether it's a sports, uh, whether it's cooking, uh, whether it's cars, everybody has terminologies that are different. And I think learning those makes your life a lot easier. And that's what tonight's all about, is really to help you be able to feel comfortable with medical, cannabis, medical marijuana, figure out if it's something that can really help you, find out if it can give you your life back. And then more importantly, this webinar is really here to answer the questions you might have. So please feel free to ask, ask questions. Um, if you look down below over here, you'll see a little box, a little bubble that has like a little, the two little bubbles and it says Q&A. Please feel free to use that button to ask questions. There is no question that's that's not a good question. Um, no one's, oh, oh, nobody's a real expert in this. Everybody's learning. And please feel free to use this as a format to get your questions answered. Uh, you have a couple of people here that pretty much have been around the industry for a while and can help you get those answered. The other thing is you'll find a chat button that's more over here. Um, it's really, we really don't follow the chat as much as we follow the Q question and answer, but we do have a couple of moderators that are following that and we will look at it if you have a question that you happen to put in there as well. It's not a, it's not a penalty box, it's just if you want to get your question to the top of the top, get our attention, use the Q&A button. Now, I do want to mention that after the webinar, you'll get a copy of an email uh, and what it's going to have is a link to a video that has this video, that has a YouTube version of this video. It has a copy of the presentation and all the speaker notes. So we're going to make it very easy for you to be able to not only get the information, review it, but also be able to watch it again and potentially pass it on to your friends. Please feel free to do that. I'm joined tonight by a gentleman that I've had the pleasure of working with in the past and someone who's been very influential here in the Florida medical marijuana market, uh, Ron Watson. Ron, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, let's, let's, let's have everybody, let's help everybody understand what medical marijuana is. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this opportunity. It truly is an honor. I've, I've listened to a lot of these. I've participated in one before, and I, I can handle 101 if I can feel comfortable for that. that that's what I, I, I've said. So uh, a little bit about my background. I've actually a lobbyist by trade most of my life. I represented either physicians or dentists before the legislature. And then unfortunately, I lost a child to leukemia after a brave 14 month battle. So about two years later, when the uh, a low THC bill was going through the process, I decided to basically quit my job and start my own firm so I could talk about uh, a medicine for children. Um, and so here we are all of these years later, and I was actually honored with the ability to help create MOVE. So MOVE is one of the medical license holders here. Um, we got our license about two and a half years after the original five. Um, but right now in Florida, I think we're up to 59, almost 60 stores that we have uh, across the state. So um, really look forward to the opportunity today to be able to chat with you all. But by trade, I'm, I'm just a dumb lobbyist who kind of, you know, fell into this and had some circumstances that uh, allowed my passion to drive where we are. So again, Mark, that's just a little bit about me. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I look forward to uh, getting through this presentation with you all. Yeah, I think also, you know, you, you are humbly... Um, discounting the fact that you went through a terrible time with your, I believe it's your son, and you got a lot, of, you got an introduction to cannabis uh, and to lifestyle medical conditions kind of uh, in the bath of fire. Um, yeah. So I, I wish I'd known then what I know now because I would have been sneaking it into him at Shands if it was unacceptable still at that stage. But instead, I was out in the parking lot trying to survive uh, losing a child uh, to cancer. And so I've dedicated the rest of my life to educating anybody that'll listen because this plant is full of medicine. It has so many different benefits to the body. And um, again, uh, I really am thankful for the opportunity to be with you today. Yeah, and I don't want to I don't want to drag this uh, introduction on too long, but I do think there's one thing that's really important that I think a lot of people should know about. Tell them about the inscription that's on every move building. Uh, that's a dedication of your son. It, it, it really is. So if you go to any of the moves in the highest honor of my life, about 12 months into my son's 14 month battle against leukemia down at Shands, there was a whiteboard on the wall and it said what his goals for the day were to be. And one day I walked in there and his goal for the day was to be awesome, but to be cool and to be funny. So ever since that day, I kind of made that my motto. And so I literally had a, a nice dentist friend of mine make that for a nice wristband. So I actually have a wristband dedicated to my son that said that. 
And when we finally opened up our first move store to the surprise of my life um, and the greatest honor, there is a plaque there in every move store that says um, be awesome, cool and funny on it. And it's dedicated to Dylan Montgomery Watson, who was my son. And believe it or not, he would be 19 this Sunday. So, um, yeah. So, so say that again. It's uh, I'm going to put it in the chat. What, what, what does it exactly say? Be awesome, cool and funny. And that was his goal for the day. And this was a child laying in shans after 12 months of battling leukemia. And that was his goal for the day. So every day for the rest of my life, my goal has been to try to be awesome, to be cool and to be funny. So again, in the highest honor of my life, um, this wonderful company that I work with um, dedicated that plaque to my son. And it's in all the move locations around Florida. I think that's great. I think that's an inspiration, I think, for everybody. Um, that being said, I think let's jump into the presentation itself. And... Uh, what I wanted to do is before we jump into it, there's a, a number of things that come up. And as I mentioned before, medical cannabis is not complicated, but medical cannabis does have a terminology all its own. And a lot of people hear this terminology and they, they don't understand it. It makes them a little bit confused. And so what I'm really going to walk through is I'm going to talk about a terminology guide, which we're going to provide to everyone who's, who's registered and watching this webinar. We're going to talk about how safe medical cannabis is. We're going to talk about why it's a big deal. What's the big deal about cannabis? Why do people make a big deal about it? How does it work? What's the difference between cannabis and marijuana and hemp? Um, we hear things like strains, cultivars, all this technology stuff. What does that really mean? How does that affect you? How does that affect you getting better and you helping you with your medical condition? And then we're going to talk about the different ways that you can take medical cannabis, which we call routes of administration. A little bit about dosing, because dosing is really the key, and then a little bit about move, because when you finally say, look, this is something that can maybe help me, the question is, where do I get it, and how do I find a quality vendor, and that's what move represents. So that's what this webinar is going to be all about. Um, so it's a, a number of slides, but we're going to kind of walk right through it. And again, if you have questions, please bring them up. That's what we're here to really answer. So a lot of people ask, what is, it, is there a guide to terminology? And the answer is, yes, there is. The best guide that I have found is from the National Environmental Health Association. And we're going to have this sent out to you. It's going to be a link that's going to be in the email that we send to you as a follow-up. It has all the different terms that are out there, the definitions that are there. Uh, it's a rather large document, so I'm not going to go through it right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is as we're going through the presentation and we come up with terminology, we'll explain that to you and kind of walk you through that as we, as we go through it. But I want you to know that we'll be able to see all of the terms that are here. You'll be able to check out that's out there and have a reference guide going forward on medical cannabis, we're gonna provide that to you. Question becomes, how safe is it? Because we hear about people dying from overdoses. We hear about people that take drugs and have a major problem. Pharma drugs do have a problem. And that's not to say that there aren't some issues related to holistic medicine, which is what we're talking about here. But what's fascinating is the World Health Organization who's been monitoring medical marijuana and cannabis uh, literally for over 60 years has no reported deaths from the use of marijuana, either recreationally or medically. Let me say that again. No one has ever died from using medical cannabis. Now, that's not to say that if somebody's taking too much of it, they might not have, they might not get high. They might, you know, they might not feel really well. They may get a little bit anxious, but you're not going to die. That's the key. And a lot of times, especially if you're dealing with pain, in my case, that's what I'm dealing with. I have a high, I have a problem with, uh, with pain. Uh, due to an automobile accident, I can take medical cannabis and feel assured that if I happen to maybe not do something right, it's not going to kill me like the opioids will do. So it's something that's really out there. This chart that's put out there, by the way, this chart has not been updated since 2016 for a number of different political reasons. It wasn't updated by the last administration. And that's because what it really shows is how safe cannabis is. This is the chart that says how much of it do you have to take in order to have a lethal overdose of, of the product itself. And since no one's ever died from it, jokingly, um, when being questioned, one of the questions, one of the CDC members uh, uh, was asked, how much cannabis do you have to, do you have to consume to have it kill you? And their answer was, you'd have to eat 1,500 pounds of cannabis in, in, in a half hour in order to be able to, to die. Now, I think if you ate 1,500 pounds of anything in a half hour, you'd probably die. And I challenge you whether you could actually eat that much in that amount of time. It was a joke that he threw out there because he wanted to make the point that it wasn't going to hurt you. On the other side of the coin, it was kind of put in because it's in government uh, record. It got, it got used as one of the examples. But the point is that we've never had anyone, no confirmed cases of anyone dying from cannabis that's out there, which can't be said for a lot of different other things that, that are there. 
So this kind of shows you that, that we're, we're pretty safe by heading in this particular direction. And you might say, well, I hear about adult use or I hear about um, recreational marijuana, what's the difference? Medical marijuana refers to using cannabis, using this plant to relieve either, either severe or chronic conditions. It addresses a lifestyle medical, lifestyle altering medical condition. Recreational cannabis is something where people use it more for enjoyment and for euphoria. And I think, Ron, you've, Ron, I think you've seen both of those, right? Yes. Right. Going on. So I think you've seen both of those going on in, in, in the industry. And I think there's a lot of politicians you see that where they worry about the recreational side versus the medical side. Um, and it's, it's really a shame that there hasn't been more medical marijuana programs put into place because of the fear of recreational cannabis. Is that safe to say? I think that's absolutely safe to say. Uh, yep. So it's out there. Now, why is cannabis? What's the big deal about cannabis? Why is it a big deal? Well, I look at cannabis as a medicine cabinet. And I say that because when you look at it, really medical cannabis is the way of unlocking a lot of medical properties of the cannabis plant. It has 450 medical properties. It has 120 cannabinoids and it has 100 terpenes. And these are the ones we know about. But those are the ones that are being studied. They're actually now have identified over more than 200 different cannabinoids, but they haven't studied most of them because really we've only found them in the last six months. And cannabis research has been something that's really pretty hard to, to um, let's just say it's been pretty hard to, to um, uh, 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 research because of the restrictions by the U.S. federal government on medical cannabis. Most of the research is being done outside of the United States. But I think the real, real issue is the key called the entourage effect where using cannabis, it's interesting that as we use it, the different cannabinoids work together. And what they end up doing is it's like one and one is three. It makes them a lot more effective. Um, in other words, they enhance the medical efficacy of, of cannabis. And Ron, you've seen that quite a bit in, in, in your business where uh, using cannabis has actually helped people and using the THC and the CBD together is better than using just CBD or THC. Absolutely. The entourage effect is a real thing. And we also, we have a lot of one-to-one -one products because it, uh, we believe that that really does help in, in so many conditions. Right. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. But really, why is cannabis a big deal? What, what's, what is it all about? Well, we all know about the nervous system. Once we were basically learning about our bodies, we knew about the nervous system. We knew that if we cut our finger, we hurt ourselves, we sprained an ankle, we had pain, we, the nervous system would tell the brain we have a pain. And, and it was something that we we're all very, very, very well aware of. What's interesting is when you have a problem and your parts of your body communicate to your brain and say, you know, Houston, we have a problem. What does your brain do with it? Houston, what do you do with it? What I'm fascinated with about cannabis is for centuries, we studied the nervous system and did not understand what the brain did with those signals. What's, what we found out really since 1980 and out really in, in, in more than 90s and the 2000s, we found out that our body has had, and we've identified a cannabinoid system that works in conjunction with and parallel to your nervous system. So when your body says, Houston, we have a problem, you have inflammation, you, ha you have pain, you have problems with your digestive system or whatever, your body, your brain says, how about we have a problem? It then generates endocannabinoids that then are sent to that part of the body to address your body's health. Your endocannabinoid system is something that helps you stay in what we call homeostasis. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but it's what controls the pain, the anxiety, your memory, your appetite, your, your, your inflammation, your immune system. It's, it, to me, Ron, this is one of those things that I just cannot understand how we can study the nervous system and miss the endocannabinoid system in modern medicine. Well, Doc, if I may, this is the exact reason why the majority of physicians have no idea that this is actually medicine, because they didn't learn about the endocannabinoid system when they went to medical school. So they have to relearn this after graduation, and so to speak. And so it really is goes counter to their belief system. And so th th this is an amazing discovery. And this is why the plant works, uh, because it, it, it interacts with this system within our body. But again, the majority of doctors didn't learn this in medical school, so they don't believe it works. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, but in reality, what we're finding out is it not only works, it's, it's very strong. What do we mean by this? I used a term called homeostasis, which is how your body stays in balance. This is when you, quote unquote, feel good. Well, your body has, your body produces what they call endocannabinoids. These are produced by your body naturally. Your brain triggers them. It says we have a, we have a problem. 
And those endocannabinoids go through your blood system, that part of your body, to address that particular <laughs> issue. What's fascinating about the cannabis plant, plant is it has something called phytocannabinoids. And those phytocannabinoids are structurally identical to the endocannabinoids in your body. In other words, they are going to help your body be able to provide the medicine it needs that it actually produces to be able to address itself. It mimics exactly to the endocannabinoids your system produces and also helps you bind to the receptors to be able to address those particular issues. So what's interesting is as you get older, I'm a senior citizen, once you get over the age of, really over the age of 55, you're not producing as many endocannabinoids. Your body produce, doesn't produce it as fast as it should. So having some additional phytocannabinoids in your body really helps your, in essence, helps your batteries stay charged to be able to address a particular medical condition that you're currently having or one that might come up. So it's really interesting how th this one plant is really nature's answer to helping your body heal itself and stay in homeostasis. It can be viewed as almost the vitamins for the bloodstream. You know, I mean, that, that when you look at it that way, it really is kind of like, like we take vitamins to replace things within our body that are lacking. That's exactly what this plant does. Yeah, yeah it's really, it's really interesting. Now we hear about, we hear about a couple of things called CBD and THC. Uh, Ron, tell us the difference between them because these are the main cannabinoids that of the of the 200 that they know about. These are the main ones that people talk about a lot. Um, you, you see, there's there's differences and there's politics behind each one. Well, there certainly is. Now let's go back to the whole what's you know what's hemp and what's not, and we'll get into all that. And what's legal? You know, the whole definition of THC is the delta nine. So the whole the plant is illegal once it has a certain percentage of THC. The THC is the more uh, euphoric, mind altering kind of helps with pain focus. And CBD is more of the side of anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety. It also helps with sleep and so forth. These are probably the two most, as I like to say, famous, you know, of the cannabinoids that are in the plant and the, and the most prevalent. And so um, it's very interesting that these are the, the two most famous ones. But like you said, um, they all work in an interaction together. And we're starting to look at a lot of the other ones in isolation as well. But these are the two that are the most, I, I like to say, famous. And, and, and THC has the ability to have what they call a, 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 a psychoactive a component to it. So this is where people can get high. And in recreational or adult use cannabis, uh, this is really the objective is to get as much THC as you can. It's kind of, I'm going to a beat, I'm going to a pool party. So I'm looking for my Bacardi 101, you know, for my, for my uh, pool drink, uh, where CBD is very much uh, helps with a lot of different things. And we'll talk about that. And working together, they do a lot of magic. So we'll talk a little about that as it goes along. But I think to understand really cannabis, there's a little genus here. And that is when the plant is actually comes from, come up from a seed, the first thing that's created is called CBGA and CBGVA. What's interesting is that morphs into the, the it, as it's growing, as the plant starts growing, it generates a CH, oops, on here, it generates THCA, CBDA, and CBCA. And these are, these are components that are in the plant itself. When you see a bud of, of cannabis, that's what you see that's in there. This is your raw cannabis. Now, as it's been heated and as it ages, it morphs. Uh, so very much like wine, it morphs into different things. And this is where the, the, the A's are turned into THCA, turns into THC, CBD, AC, and turns into CBD. And this is where all the different components come from. And what happens is it ends up spawning Right now, we know of over 200 different cannabinoids that get created that actually help with different medical conditions. When the plant has been sitting there for a while and when it's been aged, this is where you get your CBN, which is good for sleep and for pain management. This is where you get your Delta 8s. This is where you get a lot of your different products that are out there. And this is where aging also is something that has to do with, with cannabis itself. But this heat element right here is very, very important because as the product ages, and as it gets heated, it also helps produce a lot of the terpenes. And the terpenes are really important for the medical, pra medical practice that's out there. So I think people just perceive that the, the plant gets can't, plant is born and all of a sudden all these cannabinoids are out there. And this really comes from a process of not only growing, but also the way it's processed, which is what MOVE is all about, how to process the plant itself. I love this slide. You know, I've been doing this for a long time and I learn something new all the time. And I just really think this is an excellent slide. Yeah, this really helps people understand where it all comes from. It, it, is, a, it is an amazing, it is really an amazing plant. This is a, a CBD wheel, it's a simplification of all the cannabinoids that are out there. But basically CBD, whether you find it in marijuana, cannabis, 
or you find it in hemp, it's the same thing. All these C's over here is what you find in all the CBD products that are out there. When you talk about THC, there are obviously more than just these THC uh, um, cannabinoids, but these are the main ones that people talk about to see the THCAs, the, 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 the Delta 8s, the THCVs. But what's interesting is if you look over here, you'll see some of the CBG products uh, help with pain, for example, and also so does Delta 9. So what's interesting is when you have two different cannabinoids working together, one and one becomes three. They work together. They actually feed off of themselves and they actually create something called the entourage effect, which really helps be able to not only make the product help with the healing properties, but also help you address different conditions that you find within your body. Well, a lot of times just when you have less inflammation, that in and of itself reduces pain. Um, and so, you know, I say CBD is really good for that as well. Sure. And these little blue dots over here that you see, um, this is the, the different receptors Oops, this is different receptors for THC that, that, that are more favorable or friendly to THC, where the, the darker ones here are the ones that are more friendly to the CBD brand, brand of products. And as you can see, a lot of this, the brain and central nervous system is affected by a lot of the THC products or the CBD products really are helped all over, the, all over the body. We'll talk about that in just a second. But how does this really work? Well, we talked about your nervous system before. What's interesting is you, your body produces endocannabinoids. If your nervous system says, we have a problem in Houston, let's produce it. If you happen to have can photocannabinoids in your body, they actually get stored in your body. And as you need them, they get pulled out of your fatty acids and they're be, being able to produce the center of that part of your body. And as I mentioned, as we get older, we don't necessarily have all of the basic components that we need in our body. They're not producing them as much as we did before. And this is like a vitamin. This helps you be able to stay healthy and be able to help maintain your health. Now, you'll hear a lot about synthetics. We may hear some about synthetics, like Marinol. We're not going to talk about synthetics tonight because Marinol and the synthetics are primarily only THC, and they really should be used under the care of a doctor, a very close, close attention of a doctor. They're really not, they were designed, really were designed and, and aided by the federal government for um, help with people with, uh, with appetites and with, with nausea and a lot of different medical conditions from the Veterans Association. Um, but I'll leave the synthetic part alone. I want to concentrate on the medical side, which is the endocannabinoids and phytocannabinoids. Your brain says, Houston, we have a problem. It then triggers the, the production of those. And this is where, again, this is a process where it controls your appetite, your pain, your pleasure, your immune system, that type of thing. Specifically, what happens is that when your brain says, your, your nervous system says we have a problem, it then triggers the production of endocannabinoids, which comes from your fatty acids. It turns those fatty acids into long chain fatty acids. And then they get sent to your bloodstream to a part of your body that's being affected, whether that's pain, inflammation, um, it, whatever condition that it's trying to address, it, it, it actually addresses that. And this is interesting because this is your body producing its own medicine, which is one of the reasons why no one's ever died from using medical cannabis. Mark, isn't there also a reason that, that you test a couple of weeks to three weeks to a month later because your body actually stores these chemicals that they, they know are going to be used later when they're needed? That's correct. In other words, you're, you, a lot of, there's, a, there's, a, there's like this perception that if I take CBD with no THC in it and I get tested, uh, the, it, it, they won't find anything. Well, the answer is, yes, they will. They probably will because your body is storing in your fatty acids, endocannabinoids and photocannabinoids. And they'll stay in your body for, well, it depends on, again, this is what we're studying right now. We know this stays in your body for at least 30 days and can stay in some people's bodies for as long as 90 days. So that's what you have to be careful of when you use medical cannabis. If people are testing, if, if employers are testing for cannabis, as part of the job condition, which fortunately right now, there's a lot less of employees or employers that are testing for medical conditions for, for cannabis than they were before because they found out this is kind of a not something that's really going to help them with their um, employee base. But let's talk about the, the endocannabinoids themselves. Um, what's interesting is there's a lot of literature out there that says, well, THC is good for CBD1, CB1 receptors, CBD is good for CB2 receptors. They both work with both receptors. What we found with studies the last couple of years is that CBD actually addresses not just the CB1 and CB2 receptors, but also a lot of series of receptors in your body that have to do, for example, with this, this VR1 receptor that has to do with pain. It has to do with inflammation in your coronary circulation, your blood system. Uh, it has to do with your blood pressure. 
It has to do with serotonin, which is your blood level and your breathing. So what they found is that CBD has more effect on your body than just the CD1 and CB2 receptors. And in fact, it goes back to what you were saying, Ron, earlier. Um, this is really the body's, the risk is the body's vitamin pack that it's looking for to have it help itself stay in homeostasis, which, which is very fascinating. A lot of doctors don't know this, and it's a lot of the research is just coming out right now. So this goes back to the entourage effect, where when you put CB, CBD and THC together, that one and one is three. One of the fascinating things about this is if you use CBD with THC, the CBD will lessen the effect of THC. I know one of the questions that people have is I'm going to try medical cannabis. I'm worried about if I take too much THC, I'm going to get high. It's going to make me high. It's going to make me nervous. Well, you'll find out that if you, in fact, use the CBD component, it'll actually bring you back down. I recommend that when people get into dosing or figuring out what their dosing level is, they have a bottle of CBD available to them. And if they start feeling uncomfortable, they start feeling anxious, getting high, you take equal amount of CBD to the THC you just took, and it'll bring you back down usually within 10 to 15 minutes of that particular time. It's very, very effective. Um, also, the terpenes is something we don't, we'll talk a little bit about. Terpenes are really the key. They're the things that trigger all the medical benefits that you find in medical cannabis. Any thoughts on this, Ron? I was about to say that's great advice, though, having that CBD handy just in case you, you get a little bit too much, because we're going to talk about it in a little while, you know, finding that magic spot. Here's a way if you went a little too far on that side to come back. So that's great advice. Yeah, it's called a rescue. It's called a rescue. A lot of doctors will tell you, well, chew cracked pepper. Well, I think that's cool. However, I'm not big into, I'd rather do some CBD than some cracked pepper to control my, uh, my anxiety. I'm not going to go through every blue part of the slide. I just want people to be able to see this and have this as a reference of all the different medical conditions that cannabis addresses. And these are just a, this is an abbreviated list. Each of the blue underlines here has a medical study that's associated with it. There's been a lot of studies on medical cannabis. There's a lot of perception that it hasn't been studied because here in the United States, it's a schedule one drug. And as a schedule one drug, we're not allowed to do research. But what we have found is that overseas, especially in Israel, uh, we've been, they've been studying medical cannabis now for over 60 years, and they have a plethora of medical studies, not to mention Spain, uh, Germany, uh, 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 um, Canada, are, have done a lot of research into medical cannabis. So we do have medical studies. We do know it works effectively. And to be blunt, we have 5,000 years of use of cannabis that kind of tells us what's working and not working. Uh, long before we were inventing studies, people were using it to be able to help a lot of different conditions. And that's what I find amazing is it has a long history of, of medical use uh, and how it's used in different, different, different parts of the world. We're up to 750,000 Floridians that are benefiting from this legally as well. So um, it's, yeah. an amazing, it's an amazing number that keeps going in the right direction. You know, every time I hear that number, I hear about how Rick Scott was trying to do everything he possibly could to, um, to try to stop the medical cannabis movement, even though the people of the state asked for it. And unfortunately, he put some limits on some regulations in place that cause it to be uh, to get a card to be expensive, which we're trying to reverse. But in the meantime, um, it is something that people have found. A lot of people have found they've got their life back by being able to do this. So it's something to take a look at. Ron, I, when I got involved in this industry, all I heard about was this was when I was a kid growing up. Uh, all I heard was, was sativa and indica. Uh, we don't hear much about that today, but give, speak, give us a little sativa and indica definition here for a second. Well, it's funny, you, you made a wine reference earlier. I like to tell everybody, you know, you have white, you have red and you have blush, right? So that's kind of how I like to say it for it as well, you know? So, you know, the old the old saying is indica is in the couch and sativa is clean the house. And so historically they've said, if it leans, you know, sativa that it, you know, it's a different structure of the plant, it's longer, it's narrow, but then also the chemicals that were in it would give you more of an uplifting feeling like cleaning the house versus the indicas that would be more, you know, put you in the couch help you go to sleep and so forth. It's a different plant over time. It grew from different areas of the world. But as we like to say, hybrids, you actually mate plants. And so it's really interesting. Why are there all these different strain names and how come, you know, Bubba Kush this one versus that one? Well, because literally what's happened over the centuries is the plants have been merged. They've been, you know, mated, so to speak. And then each one has a different profile and a different system. And then you mate that one with another one and so forth. So I think the the old time sativa indica kind of um, distinctions are, are, are falling because we have so many crosses and hybrids and so forth. 
Yeah, it's like it's almost like roses. You know, the question is, what's the original rose and what it's like? There's so many variations of it, and they're all they all have their own purpose and they all have their own beauty. Um, but we we've, we've now got to a point where we know a lot more about it. A and we have a lot more options that are out there. People hear about hemp. They say, why don't we just use hemp CBD for a lot of things? And hemp is something that not only is great for uh, for medical, and we consider hemp to be part of medical marijuana, um, but all hemp also has a tremendous number of, 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 uh, of industrial uses. You want to give us a little contrast here between them, Ron? Well, yeah, let's go back to the definition. So the definition of hemp, the difference between hemp and medical marijuana or cannabis or all the other stuff basically is the amount of THC that, that, that you know, you can have as much CBD as you want in there, but it has to be 0.3% or less of THC for your plant to be defined as hemp. Now they can do the same extraction processes that we do with what we call a hot plant. So if you have a plant that has THC in it, those are the hot plants, but hemp is now federally legal you know it passed by the feds this is a thing that's legal in florida you can be a hemp farmer um and so um anyone can do that you know in the medical world you have to be a vertical so if you get one license you have to do the grower the processor and so forth but in the hemp world you don't have to do that so there there is a definition that's what it is um and so that's so hemp is produced and, and processed the same way as marijuana. It's just the different chemicals that you have when the extraction occurs. Sure, um, but I think also really hemp was originally not aimed to be an oil. It was really designed for um, industrial use. I know Florida was the largest producer of hemp rope uh, prior to World War II. And I yeah, think- I, I truly believe it can replace a lot of plastics that are out there right now. The problem with it is, is we have a lot of hemp growers. We have a lot of people that want hemp products, but we don't have a lot of the manufacturing right now. So to be able right. to manufacture the actual stock and turn it into a, you know, a, a, an industrial product, um, that's what I think in my humble opinion is lacking in the hemp industry. They turn a lot of it into CBD and now Delta 8 and the rest of it we talk about in a little bit. But I truly believe once we get the industrial um, um, industries up and running to produce the hemp into all of these products, I truly believe it will be um, um, world changing. Yeah, but I think you hit the nail on the head. It, they've, they've discovered a lot of products that replace the plastics that are good for the earth. I know they're building materials that are stronger than concrete. Um, yep. Ford built a car based on hemp uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So and powered it with the oil from hemp as well. So it's just an amazing, yeah. it is truly an amazing plant. And you know, when we talk about it, people are like, yeah, you think this is going to change? It does everything. I said, no, but it does a lot. It's not the cure for every condition, but it, boy, it really addresses a lot of them. And here's why. Right, right. And, and basically what's interesting is hemp is in fact legal in all states. Um, they're still working on making marijuana illegal in all states, but the states can take the initiative to make it legal in their particular states like Florida's done. That's out there. Well, you also hear about what they call broad, broad spectrum and full spectrum uh, CBDs. Uh, I think the broad spectrum CBDs really don't have any THC in it. You want to take that? You want to talk about that? Yeah, no, go ahead. That, that, that's basically the difference between broad spectrum and full spectrum. So like you said, and I just always believe that, you know, I tell everybody, be careful, even when you're taking CBD products, if you're worried about testing, there's going to be that potential that in the full spectrum CBD products, there's going to be that trace amounts of THC in there, which will show up on, on a test. So, you know, I, that's one of the things I try to, you know, warn people about. And I should mention to folks, this is, we're here to answer your questions. So please feel free in the Q&A button down over here. Please feel free to bring up some questions. We're here to answer them. And then hopefully we can, I know that this is one of those topics that um, I'm sure you're sitting there saying, I wish I knew about this and I wish I knew about that. Here's your opportunity. Please let us know. Um, but yeah, a little bit of THC really helps to be able to trigger that whole entourage effect, which is why that 0.3 is in the, in the CBD products. Now, that's enough to help with a lot of different medical conditions, but I don't believe hemp is really good to help with a lot of the pain other than reducing the inflammation and the pain associated with inflammation. A lot of people will say it's really great. It's helped me with my pain, but really it helped me with the inflammation and helped me with pain. But if you're really addressing pain, you need a bit of a higher ratio of THC to be able to do that. Now, what's interesting, and if you look at medical marijuana today, we started out with the, C, with, the, with the indica and sativas, we've migrated into understanding the different cannabinoids that are out there. And we've also done a lot of research into what they call the terpenes. And the terpenes are what we give the medical properties to cannabis that's there. What it's triggered is as we, especially the last two or three years, we've been able to take a look at the plants that are being grown 
and it's the fingerprint. It's like, what is that plant really designed to do? When I take a look at the cannabinoids, I take a look at the terpenes and flavonoids that are in there. What is it designed to do? And that's, we call that a cultivar. It's cultivars are really designed to help, whether that's through that sleep, whether that's going to be for um, uh, arthritis, whether it's going to be for uh, pain. Um, there's a number of different things that these things, that these cannabis plants are being designed and being it really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the range engineered, but I would say they're being bred to be able to address those particular conditions. And you've seen it now, you know, you have your reserve flower, which is really heading in that particular direction. I think the future of this is going to be in 10 years, you're going to be able to walk into a dispensary and say, I need something for pain. And they'll be able to have a whole set of products that address that with a little label on it. That's yeah, pretty much where we're headed. We're working with a company called Strain Print. I call it Weed Homework. And basically what it is, is the um, when, when you buy a product from us, if you agree to this, we try to give you some incentives to fill out all this information. The idea is 20 years from now, it'd be great if a doctor could, you know, query 37-year-old Crohn's patient, you know, what plant has helped the other people in the past and be able to like help steer people on their self-titration journey a little bit better up front. So yeah, we're, we're fascinated by all that we're studying. And I think that's where it's going to lead us. Sure. Sure. Now, what's interesting is when you're taking a look at putting this together, the question is, how do I take enough medical cannabis? And this is what we call your sweet spot. How do I take enough dose that gives me a, a positive experience, meaning it's addressing my medical condition with minimizing the number of side effects? And that is called dosing. And we'll talk about dosing in a minute. But that's one of the keys to really understanding medical cannabis. We've come a long way. And we've done an awful lot to understand what this plant can do. And it's all built around the fact that we've really discovered the, the GPS, the, the, the gas that's in the engine here that makes the whole thing work, are really the terpenes. Uh, Ron, there's, these are some of the most popular terpenes, although there's over 100, 120 of them that's been discovered. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about terpenes, and I know it has, that has a large effect on what you're doing at MOVE. Well, yeah, and I think we're going to have a slide that comes up in a minute, but what we've tried to do is actually identify these very similar terpenes, and what we've done is put the strains that we have with it. So, you know, I, I, I didn't hear up until a couple of years ago, anybody ever say, you know, eat a mango while you consume? And I always thought, why? Well, because the mango has a whole lot of myrcene in it, and so that's a very similar terpene that naturally occurs in, in many strains. And so all of these terpenes, they, they occur naturally in lots of other plants and products and like, you know, and so forth. So it really is kind of neat. They each have their own effect. Um, each plant has a different amount of terpene by percentage. Some of them are high in this versus high in that. And so, you know, on my self-titration journey, I found out over time that if it, if the plant had a purple hue to it, that for whatever reason, I like to say my body likes that, or it likes my body. And so over time, that was just a discovery I had. And so each of these terpenes has a different effect. And um, it's interesting to then try to identify the plants that give you the most of what you think you need. Sure. I mean, we're, we're, we're coming up with, uh, I hope within the next couple of months, we'll have a, a program where you'll be able to say, here's my medical condition. It'll tell you the terpenes that you should be looking for. And then we can map that right to your, your dispensary. Um, and I think that'll be something we're coming up with. Not, not finished yet, but that's where we're headed. But it's really important to really understand this because when you take a look at, for example, move, you've done a great job to be able to say, if I'm looking at, if I'm looking for, for example, inflammation, here are the terpenes and here's the strains that you should be looking for. And where's the other plants that it's found in that, that's in nature. And you've done a great job of doing that mapping. Move has done a great job of doing this. Well, I thank you. Like I said, this is, it can be overwhelming, but at the same time, once you start to understand that the these simple kind of concepts, then you understand why you know there, there there's a lot of choices. But there's an interesting reason why there's a lot of choices. I always so like to think of these terpenes you can also get that are helpful to your body, not just from cannabis, but all of these other naturally occurring things. Like I mentioned before, I just you know, that, that's where the smell comes from. And I go back to wine too, you know, wine has a different taste, a different smell because they have a whole lot of different terpenes in the grapes as well. And so right. those are the same kind of effects that and that's why there's just so many different strains of cannabis. But back to the wine again, you know, the white, the red and the blush, you know, the blush is all the different hybrids out there. And so that's another similar way to look at, at cannabis. And if you're looking for example, for pain relief and to have a question coming up, that's why I mentioned this. We know myrcene is very good for that, where lemonade is good for the, um, for the uh, antidepressant anxiety, but it's not necessarily going to address pain relief, is what I'm trying to point out. Uh, we look at linalool, for example, again, something that's great for pain relief, 
uh, and for depression. Um, and also, but it, if you look at the terpenoline, that's really not something that's really great for, for pain relief. So what's fascinating is the different strains of cannabis don't necessarily address all the different medical conditions that you're trying to address that, that, that's out there. Um, here's an example of pinene, for example, which is great for as a bronchial inhaler, helps you with your focus, helps you be able to help you with your memory. Um, what, what's fascinating about this is it's really something that's helped, helped a lot of people. Um, and, and it's something that people are, are really, uh, they can relate to. They, they're used to that pine smell and things like that. But this also ties back to the products that, that you have in stock and they can help you with different conditions. I'm going to take on the question from your anonymous question here. It says, uh, do smoking street marijuana uh, supposed to help with chronic pain or is there a medical marijuana that particular that to ease chronic pain? The answer to your question is it's not necessarily the medical cannabis as much as it is the, the terpenes themselves. When you buy a street version of cannabis, you don't know what's in it. You don't know the strains. They may tell you what the strain is, but I can tell you there are strains like Jack Herrera. The Jack Herrera is, is different. Jack Herrera is not Jack Herrera is not Jack Herrera. If I buy it from the different dispensaries, it has a different terpene profile that's out there. So what I'm trying to point out is when you buy a product on the street, there is no label on it. You don't know if that's going to address, for example, the pain that you're really looking for. And a lot of people will get very frustrated. They try it, it doesn't work. And yet when you go, if you're working with a medical marijuana doctor or, or practitioners like myself, we can direct you to products that will actually help you with the, your pain itself. And, and to be blunt, you can walk into the, uh, into the person behind the counter and move, describe your condition, and they should help you with using this chart, identify the products that help you. Is that correct, Ron? Yeah, no, I want it, Mark, you know, I, I've been a lifelong consumer as well. So I, of course, used to get from the legacy market myself. And what I like to say is Johnny brought me four different, you know, um, 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 strands, so to speak. And there was one that I was always hoping Johnny was bringing me. But it is really nice to be able to walk into my, whether it be move or, you know, any of my competitors and have a plethora of options and be able to literally, you know, try this, try that, try that, and then hopefully discover what works best for you. And then when you make that discovery, you know, keep going back to it. Um, and so that that it really is an interesting thing in, in, in this industry is that it's a self titration journey that each patient has. And what works for you is not necessarily going to work for me. You know, a lot of doctors say, Ron, what do I give them for this? And I say, it's not it's not that easy, doc, because my endocannabinoid system is off differently than yours is, Mark. So that same plant that renourishes my body is going to renourish your body slightly differently. And so it really is kind of that self journey. So what we're trying to help here is at least with the terpenes, once you find what you like, and maybe you'll help by knowing, hey, this is what I need, you know, in this terp then you can start trying to find the strains that actually help you the most. Yeah. And let's, let's dig down on that question. I know, Mike, you asked a question, uh, and we'll answer that in just a moment. Um, but in answering that question, I think it's important to cover this particular slide. There's different ways of taking medical cannabis, and everybody has their own preferences. Um, there is an oral version, there's a sublingual version, an inhalation, and a topical way of taking it. Now, what's interesting is the oral version goes into your stomach, your stomach then absorbs that. And then it turns not only the Delta, it, it turns the Delta nine into what they call hydroxy Delta 11, which is a very, it's actually a more powerful medicine than a Delta nine itself, but that can take an hour or two to, to, to occur. So oral use of cannabis is very effective. In fact, one of the most effective means that's out there, but it takes time. Uh, we have a, a kind of a saying in the industry that about the time you think it's not working and you're getting ready to take that second uh, bite of a chocolate, a chocolate, uh, a chocolate bit, a chocolate bit, or another gummy is about the time it starts kicking in. So when you're using oral cannabis, you really need to be patient. Well, if anybody ever gets in trouble with cannabis, it generally comes with edibles because if they're used to smoking, you feel it within five or 10 minutes pretty quickly. Right. And when you eat an edible, it can be an hour to two, frankly, like you said, before it actually gets digested through the system and then finally gets into the bloodstream. And oh, by the way, like you said, about 45 minutes, 60 minutes into it, when it turns into the hydroxy 11, it is about 10 times more powerful. So now if all of a sudden you've eaten four more because you didn't think it worked, um, about two hours later, you're going to be huddled in the corner, kind of freaking out a little. So we, 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 we caution people with our edibles and our orals that, hey, it's going to take this long. Don't eat three more because start low, go slow. Um, that's really the only time people get in trouble, with, with, mm -hmm. frankly, with edibles. 
Right. And in sublingual, what you do with sublingual is you put that in, under your tongue or put it inside your mouth, swish it around your mouth. That then enters your bloodstream fairly quickly. And usually anywhere between 10 to 25 minutes after you, you start that, you'll start feeling the effects of, of the medical cannabis. Yeah. And, and again, it's all about getting it into the bloodstream, right? So there's different routes that, that we call routes of administration that eventually get these, these wonderful chemicals into the bloodstream. So inhalation is probably the quickest onset time. We have moved to, I'm also very proud of, we have what's called a meter dose inhaler. It's like a puff of asthma. I don't think anybody else has it because we spent a lot of money in research and development, but that's probably the quickest onsite of any product we have. And so for a lot of the children that are having seizures, we suggest that that's probably one of the best medicines to help them as quick as possible. Um, and so again, inhalation is, is, is the quickest route. It gets absorbed through the lungs and gets into the bloodstream that way. Right. Um, but like you said, we have sublingual routes, we have oral, we have also some topicals, um, and, and it's all about getting it into the bloodstream. So right. there's lots of, lots of options. I want to bring that topical question up because Mike has a good question in this area. Topicals typically go on the screen and on the skin and really have to go through the derma in order to be able to get to that particular area. Now, a lot of topicals do, are not what they call transdermal. Transdermal means I have, I've broken down the product, made it small enough to be able to get absorbed into the derma and into your skin. And, and that's one of the unique properties of, of Move. Your topicals are transdermal where most of the tropical topicals you find on the market are not. I think this is a game changer when it comes to using a topical, is that correct? We call it encapsulation technology, but absolutely. So a lot of times, like you said, the um, it has a hard time absorbing through the fat in the skin. And so what our brilliant scientists did is they've taken the cannabinoid molecules and they stuck it in basically a water molecule. Why? Because it tricks the fat in the skin and it allows it to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And so then it releases in that way. So we have this technology, not only in our, in, in our tincture, which makes it water soluble and you can put it in any drink, but we have it in our, in our, our 72 hour patches. And, sure. and we also have it in a gel. A lot of my patients that have migraines, they swear by being able to take our topical gel and they put it directly onto their um, temple. And they've told me that that gives them the best release of almost any product they've ever tried. So we're very proud of our encapsulation. It really does, it allows more medicine to be absorbed into the bloodstream because of the scientific measure and how we bypass the fat in the skin. We tell everybody, put it on your wrists, put it on the inside of your ankle, put it somewhere where there's not a whole lot of fat and skin to begin with. And the bloodstream is as high up to the skin as you can get it. So again, our patches probably work best on the inside of the wrist. So and Michael had a question. He said, I'm using a topical of 250 milligrams THC, um, 250 milligrams of CBD. So it's a one-to-one -one for an Achilles tendonitis. It is not helping. Should I increase the milligrams and the use of CBD alone? I think the first thing I would suggest, Mike, you look at is, is it a transdermal product? Because if it's not a transdermal product, it's not entering into your blood, into your system as quickly or as effectively as it could be. So increasing the THC and CBD isn't going to be the answer because it's just not getting there. It's just not being delivered. That package isn't being delivered to the patient to be able to help you out. So I think the first thing to check on is, is it a transdermal product? I think the second is in the case of, of tendonitis, um, you really want to be able to increase. I believe if you're really looking at decreasing the, um, the, the inflammation, the CBD should do it. But I would keep a one-to-one. -one. I, I would continue to use the one-to-one -one because that THC is going to trigger the CBD and it's going to help you quite a bit to reduce that inflammation and help you with that. I think you, I think your biggest problem, Mike, is probably going to be, uh, is it, especially if you buy it off the street, you're probably not going to get a transdermal product. I really only know of three products that I will call, um, you call it a capsulated run. I only know of three products that really fall fit in that category in the whole market in the United States. So be very, very careful. You're one of them, by the way. Move is one of them. That's Thank awesome. you. Yeah, we, we put a lot of science behind our products. And so, like I said, we're very proud of that one as well. Yeah, there, there's another question that came up. There's two I want to answer these. I think these are good ones that we should be able to tackle right now. One of them is that uh, Keith asked the question, good question. Why do some people eat marijuana, cannot feel the THC? Uh, you want me to take that or you want to take it? I was going to say, Mark, you take it. Go back to that slide that I saw. So it's the A part of it. It has to be heated. It's the heating of the actual plant that then makes the THC change. So you, you go ahead and dress it a lot more scientifically than I, Mark. But that's my understanding of why when you eat it or if you juice it, you're not heating it up enough to actually turn the THCA into THC, which is the euphoric 
Is that correct, Mark? You need to get you need to get to about at least 300 degrees plus to be able to turn this this process right here, this THCA's into the CBDAs. If you one of the best things you can do if you want to really have a healthy uh, smoothie is take some cannabis leaves and, and make them into a smoothie, adding you know the, the vegetables and things that you do that's out there. Tremendous number of vitamins, tremendous number of cannabinoids. It really is something that will help you. But what's interesting, you won't get high because the leaves themselves haven't been heated. And so you're not, you're not triggering that, that THC effect. I personally uh, buy flour. And what I do in the morning is I drop it into my coffee when my coffee is being made. I have one of these Keurig things and I just drop it in the cup and it blends the coffee. What happens when that goes on is the, the, the heat that makes the coffee it's really about 220, maybe 240, about 210. And what that does is it triggers the, 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 the production of the THCA and, and the CBDA, which is the inflammation and the pain relieving cannabinoids that I'm looking for. But it doesn't trigger THC, which means I can drink my coffee, I can address my pain, I can address, address my inflammation, but I don't get high. And that's really, really important. And that's what that's what's happening is they're they're getting the benefits of the pain and the benefits of the of the inflammation without triggering the THC of getting high. And that's what you're doing. It just has to do with the temperature. Now, that also has to do why when people are using vape pens, there's a lot of different vape pens that are out there, especially for concentrates that allow you to set the temperature. It'll let you'll have a meter that's low, medium and high, a, a green, blue or red. It'll actually have an actual temperature setting on it. I have one that does that. And that's because it not only helps me know which cannabinoids I'm triggering, but also which terpenes I'm triggering that are out there. Isn't it true the lowest, the lower temperature, the more that you uh, reserve the majority of the terpenes, right? So you're trying to get it at the proper temperature where it's enough to burn it, but not enough to burn them all. Right. I, and effectively, I think the most, if you're going to use uh, some sort of a vape device, I recommend somewhere between 320 and 3, 360 degrees. I use it at 360. For example, 360 and 365 is one of the optimal temperatures for both the cannabinoids and also for the terpenes. However, my morning regime is coffee, which is well below 300 degrees. And I can tell you that is extremely effective uh, that's out there. And uh, there's a lot of people I know that do this that are in the cannabis industry. And it really is a way of getting your medication without worrying about getting high during the day because I still have to work. I still have a family. I still have grandkids. I still got to be able to conduct my life. And I don't necessarily want to get high, but I definitely want to get rid of the pain and the inflammation that's out there. So I hope that Kelly, uh, Keith, I hope that answers your question. Ron, there's another question here while I'm slide, going through the slide deck. Uh, anonymous asked the question. I don't know if you can see it. It says, I'm curious about opening up a dispensary in the Panhandle area as I'm an MMU patient. I, I, uh, I love your products, but by the way, I've learned about my dosing from uh, for my issues. I'm not looking to be uh, stoned. I've learned about my response. Why don't you take on um, that, that question? A lot, of, a lot of it has to do with, can you open up your own dispensary in the panhandle? I'll let you answer that. That's a great question. Uh, in Florida, unfortunately, the legislature, who again begrudgingly had this pushed on them, decided to create what they call a vertical system. So we only have 22 licenses in Florida right now. Move is one of them, True Leave, Cure Leaves, all the rest of these big companies, because to get a license in Florida, you have to do everything. You have to be the grower, you have to be the processor, and you have to own all your individual stores. If you go out to Colorado, it's completely different. You can either be the grower or the processor, or you can own your own you know, dispensary out there. And um, because of the way that we've set up licensure here in Florida, you really can't own your own dispensary um, standalone. Now, a lot of these head shops, you know, with Delta 8 and things like that and hemp products, you can certainly open up one of those. But as far as actually having somebody that needs to come to you for, you know, the hot plants, um, unfortunately, in Florida, they set it up a vertical system and those are the only people who can get a license. So unfortunately, the long answer, the short answer is you're, you probably won't be able to unless we get recreational and unless they set up a structure that's not what we call vertical. Right, right. So it's, it's um, recognized as something that's needed, but unfortunately, the politics right now doesn't let us, or here in Florida, doesn't let you play in that particular party. Now, I want to switch, change subjects for a second. The key to medical cannabis is how much do I take and what do I take? We call that dosing. And what's interesting about cannabis is cannabis is no different than alcohol, and it's no different than, can, than caffeine. 
I mean, I have friends who literally have, take one drink um, and one martini and, and my friend's done for the night. Uh, he's gone. I have other friends of mine that I met um, having lived in Europe. I learned very quickly, you don't drink with Germans and with Brits. They'll drink you under the table. Um, their, their tolerance for alcohol is much better than mine. Um, but I think it has to do with the fact of how your body metabolism metabolizes it and what it does. I was fascinated uh, about uh, eight months ago, I went to a medical cannabis um, conference and the doctors were sitting around a table. We were talking, this was a doctor's conference, and they were talking about how cannabis is really no different than pharma drugs. Pharma drugs, they go by weight. They'll tell you to take two pills and call me in the morning. But they were all complaining about the fact that the weight doesn't necessarily mean you're getting it right. The reason they say call you in the morning is because the doctor has to constantly change your medication to really dial it in for your body because your bodies all have a different metabolism. What in cannabis, we do something a little bit different. We try to figure out what your tolerance is to THC, to CBD, and then turn around and be able to figure out the dosing that really helps you be able to do that. This is what we call your optimal dose right here. And the question is, how do you know you're there? Your body will tell you. Trust me, when you get into medical cannabis, as you start to use it, and you start, we have something called go low and go slow. Start slow, start low with, I recommend starting with the tincture drops, going 0.25% milliliters in the morning, seeing if that hurt, helps. If you don't get any relief, try doing it twice a day, then try doing it three times a day, and then maybe up the dosage a little bit to be able to get to a point where you begin to feel, start climbing this particular thing right here until you actually begin to feel good. You will get to a point where you'll say, you know, my pain is gone. Um, my, my anxiety is gone. Um, my inflammation is down. I feel better. You'll, you'll know when it's there. And then if you continue to, to titrate up, you'll get to a point where it'll go start going down. You'll, you'll start not feeling as well. So instead of taking 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 milliliters, you go to 0 0.75. If that doesn't, isn't, isn't doing it for you, like the 0 0.5, titrate back to there. So again, this is where you'll be able to be able to try the product and you'll be able to listen to it. Your doctor is not going to tell you what's going to be good for you. You have to listen to your body. And candidly, what these physicians were telling me was they were asking the patients what they felt. They were trying to understand what the patients were feeling to be able to get the dosing right. So they were trying to do it through a third party type of thing. This is a nice little chart here where you can see as you begin to increase the dosage, the titration, you'll be able to get a little more relief. At some point in time, though, you're going to have a point where THC actually can is what they call bioptic. In other words, what it can do is it can actually cause people to get anxious can actually not, it can get people to not necessarily get the relief that they're looking for. And that's what this, what they call the toxic area over here. Your goal is really to find right here. And you might say, how do I know that? Trust me, your body will tell you. You'll know when you take that, that 0 0.5 milliliters of THC or, or, or that, that, that tincture drop twice a day, you'll know it feels good. And so that's what we're really looking for is how do you be able to titrate up to know what your CBD tolerance is and your, and your THC tolerance and how this affects your body. And really, it's something to work with your medical marijuana doctor or your practitioner to help you figure that out. Yeah, when everybody asks me, how do you function? I'm like, you know, honestly, I've been doing this so long. I don't get high anymore. I don't go to the stage of trying to get high. I go to the stage of feeling better. And like you said, having my body being able to function at a level that, that, that you know, like you said, gosh forbid, I actually feel good. One of the things I have to fight about in the legislature is God forbid that we have a euphoric feeling. And I just want to look at them and say, you mean we shouldn't feel better? You know, we shouldn't have this homeostasis feeling. It's just crazy. Right. Um, so yeah, so so it's different than regular medicine. Like you said, this is kind of a self-titration journey from the beginning versus the doctor, you know, trying to figure it out one step at a time. So it's a little different, not only for the doctor, but for the patient as well. But let me tell you, once once you get it, it it's huge. It makes a huge difference to you. I have uh, I have uh, uh, herniated discs in my neck. I have seven of them, and it is no picnic. And once I found my once I found my my dose and my titration, it opened up a whole new life for me. I got my life back. Um, and really, without it, I, I have I would have a hard time being able to function on a daily basis because the pain would drive me crazy. Not to mention it would restrict my movement and a lot of different things that are out there. You'll know that you'll know if it's working or not. Let's put it that way. Well, Mark, that's what I tell all the employees that come to work for us. I say, you know, all jobs are honorable, but if you work in a shoe store, the next time that patient comes back in to see you, excuse me, customer, they're probably not going to say that they changed you. Know, those shoes you sold me changed my life. 
It right. happens almost every day in my dispensaries around the state. And I tell everybody, it doesn't get old. When you see people getting better, when you see them excited, when you see them happy again, it doesn't get old. Right. So, yeah, and that's one of the reasons I work in this industry is I love I love to hear people say I got my life back. And what's fascinating is that's unprompted. You hear it over and over and over again. Again, what you really want to do is go low and go slow. Get yourself a one-to-one -one THC, a, a tincture product. Start with 0 0.5 milliliters. Uh, what I recommend, here's, here's, what the, here's what it looks like. You start with a very low dose over here. Try it once a day. Try it in the morning. If you do it for a day or two that doesn't work, then, then do it twice a day, morning, noon, and night, then go to three times a day. Eventually, you'll begin to feel something. And what you'll want to do is hopefully you'll be able to figure out what that relief is. You'll know the level of which you want to be able to be, not only in the number of times you take it a day, but also how much you take in that, in that milliliter drops that are over here. Um, once you figure out, gee, I'm taking, um, let me back up a little bit. I'm taking 0 0.5 milliliters, let's say twice a day, and I'm getting some relief. You can then try to experiment with uh, higher ratios of CBD to THC because, for example, in my particular case, I'm looking for a higher ratio of THC to CBD because I have pain that I'm trying to manage in my neck. My wife is completely different. Her, her, her optimal dose is 12 to 1, 12 CBD to 1 THC. That works very effectively for her. And again, we found it by finding the one-on-one, -on one-to-one ratio, then increasing the amount of CBD and, and getting it to a point where she was actually feeling comfortable. And uh, in fact, she was, it was interesting because one day she looked at me and said, I feel good. The first time I've done that in a long time. And I found that to be something knowing that we've got, we're figuring out her routes of administration. So, Roman, we've talked a lot about medical cannabis. The question is, where do you get it and how do I find a quality product? So let's talk about Move a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, absolutely. So Move was actually created by a company called AltMed. My guy came from the pharmaceutical industry. He sold a company for a lot of money, retired, never needed to work again a day in his life. But he had a daughter with epileptic seizures that no pharmaceutical could ever help besides turning her into a zombie. So here was a man who had money, who had time, and he ended up watching the Sanjay Gupta special and he went, huh. So he came out of retirement and we really kind of approached this as a pharmaceutical um, 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 plant, just like most other pharmaceuticals are made from plants. This just happened to be the forbidden fruit. So we really did kind of approach this with a lot of R&D, a, a lot of research and development that some of my competitors didn't. As we mentioned before, here's what we call the encapsulation technology when we talked about how you know it has a hard time getting through the skin and the fat to actually absorb into the bloodstream. This is the encapsulation technology that I had talked about where we actually put it into the water molecule to trick the fat in the skin. So like I said, we have it in our evolved gel, we have it in a patch, we also have this technology in some of our capsules um, and, and you know, in our tinctures as well. Um, so we're very proud of the bioavailability side of that because it really, like, like the gentleman said before, it's not really getting helping his knee. Part of most likely the problem might be is that he's not absorbing enough of it into the bloodstream. So Back in the encapsulation technology, which is really, really patented, you have a number of products that address almost every different way you can take it from sublingual drops, capsules, meter dose inhalers, which is one of your uh, really, really, I think one of your unique products. That are yeah, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, we're very also proud of, like I said, the meter dose inhaler. This basically has no exhale, no odor. I, I was actually making a pitch to a doctor down in Orlando and he started laughing. He said, Ron, I would call this the Disney route of administration because nobody has any idea that you just consumed cannabis because there's no odor, there's no smell, there's no exhale. So, you know, it's a discrete route of administration. And like I said before, it's probably the quickest onset time we have. So we're children that are having seizures. Um, you know, that, that, that's also a very a good route for them. We have a lot of the edibles and so forth. Just recently, we came out with caramels. So if you're an edible person, boy, I tell you what our caramels are to die for. Um, just this last week, we came out with an RSO um, um, vape. And so just we have so many new technologies coming out, um, uh, excuse me, an RSO edible, I'm sorry. Um, and so that's available. We now have a CBN edible too, which is one part CBN, uh, two parts THC. If you're having any kind of sleeping issues, that's wonderful. We have RSO and tincture. We have it in capsule form. We have it in the old fashioned, you know, tar, you know, in, in the syringe form as well. We just, we try to give a lot of options to patients because remember, not a lot of people like to smoke. And so there are just so many different other routes of administration. We have hard candies. We have like lozenges. We also have mints. They call them meltaways. 
we have the chocolates. Um, uh, we just have so many different varieties for you all to have options to choose from. And um, th these are some of them that we have up on the screen for you. Great. And they all are very, very high. One of the things I like about Move products is you maintain a lot of the terpenes in the products. Many of the dispensaries don't do that. We very much uh, focus on terpenes, and that is one of our goals to, you know, leave as many in there as possible for you to have the entire entourage effect. So very proud of our product lineup. You know, about two years ago, we merged with a company called Verano. So now we're in like 14 states. Um, and so very proud of the company as we move forward. There's been some changes recently, but we're all um, uh, sw swimming in the same direction now. Very proud of our, our growth in Florida. And again, even though we got our license two and a half years later, we're up to 59 stores now. And so we're very proud of our growth. Sure. Um, one of the questions that uh, Annette just brought up, and she says, um, would you please develop sugar-free edibles? Um, do you have some? That is an excellent suggestion. And let me just say, I have made it on more than one occasion. And so we are working toward that. Our edibles are vegan. They're um, pectin based, so they don't melt in the hot Florida sun. But you are not the first and you will not be the last person that is going to ask me for sugar free. I'm trying. It's a wonderful suggestion. Yeah, I know that one of your competitors have brought out one, and if I know move, you'll have it out pretty quickly. I think I, it's more of an R&D issue than it is a desire to do that. And there's a lot of people that ask for it. I think that's what you're trying to tell them. That's exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm trying. You know, I've been asking, I'd asked for a CBN line for a long time too, and we finally got one of those. So maybe my nagging, you know, persistently will pay <laughs> off eventually. It's, a, it's a great suggestion. I hear you. I will make it again. Yeah, Keith had a question. He was talking about how uh, he mentioned a comment. He gave us a comment, not a question about how it, 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 it's too expensive for him to get enough product to dose. You have, a, you need, we didn't have a slide in this deck on discounts. You have a number of discounts for patients. Is that correct? We do. We have a, a whole number of, of discounts, you know, whether you be a veteran or a student or so forth. If you go to our website, we have them all listed there. I'm sorry, I don't have them all memorized. I know for our cancer patients that are trying to do the Rick Simpson um, protocol, that can be incredibly expensive. We do have a discount. I believe it's uh, 10, uh, 10 for 450, where that would normally be, I think, 650. So we do try to discount for some of our patients, if at all possible. But I'm not going to lie to you. It is very expensive um, to be able to have to go see the doctor and then to be able to have to come see us. Unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover any of this because of the Schedule 1 problems. So as much as this medicine is helping, I understand um, the, the financial constraints, especially in the inflationary times that we find ourselves. I'll tell you to shop the discounts. You know, that's what I'll say. A lot of times if you sign up with our emails, we'll tell you every single day the discounts that we're running that day. And if it happens to be a product that, that you favor, I suggest, you know, stocking up sometimes when we when we do those large discounts. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, Keith, pay attention. Get on the mailing list for not only Move, but other dispensaries as well. Um, you send out daily and monthly or weekly and monthly specials that really are, uh, my wife is a Chico shopper and she pretty much lives by that. And I pretty much have learned to live by the weekly specials for the things that come out. And it goes exactly what you said. Um, and you have some edibles that I want to try. I'll pick some up and maybe some extras to keep me, tie me over for a month or two because uh, they do come up. You, you, you watch the specials, it's, you can save a lot of money. We also have an app now that basically records how much you've spent and then you get bonus points and that is stackable. So I think it's like, you know, I think the max uh, reward is if you spend $700, you get like $60 back. And that's yeah. literally, you can use that over top of all of the discounts as well. So that's just like cash. So we, we understand that this is cost sensitive and we're doing the best we can. We also recently came out with a new line called um, um, Savvy. And the savvy line is supposed to be a little more economical, where we're going to have a little bit larger portion size for a little bit less cost. So we hear you, and um, we're doing the best we can. Again, it is incredibly expensive. I tell everybody, we're not in the cannabis industry. I'm in the regulation industry. They, the hoops that they make us jump through for the state of Florida are incredible. And unfortunately, that adds cost. Yeah. Um, but we have, we have no choice but to comply with what they make us do. Right, right. So. Um, Basically, you have, I think you have 47 locations now, right? We're actually, I should have gotten this slide updated. My bad. We were up to 59. Wow, we've been cranking oh, up since oh, that. Oh, we have 59 locations and we opened up three on the same day a week ago, which is the second time we've opened three in one day. So sorry. So I can update it? 
Please. I, I will make sure I get you that information. That is my fault. Sorry. Yes, sir. We're up to 59. And then you have a number of you have a number of uh, ways of reaching you, not only by phone, but also by um, email and also live chat. Here's the actual addresses for each of those if you want to be able to connect up to them. The, well, and, and during the pandemic, we started a Zoom a consultation as well. So literally, if you have questions and you're nervous, you don't want to go into the store, we will set up, if you want, a Zoom consultation where we've spent an hour plus with the patients just sitting down and trying to walk them through what we know and how we think we can help them. So like you said, please reach out to us. We got all kinds of numbers there. If you go to movefl.com, that is our website. It's actual real time. I know some of my competitors say that, but they it's not. If we say we have a product, it's actually in that store. If you look at my Pensacola store versus my Tallahassee store, it's going to have different inventory because there's different actual inventory in the store. We will hold it for you for up to 24 hours. And my store here in Tallahassee has a drive through so you don't ever even have to come inside. So we try to pride ourselves in education. Uh, a lot of employees who want to work for us are like, yeah, we get to work in a weed store. They had no idea there's three weeks of scientific study that they have to go through before <laughs> we turn loose on the floor. So we're, we're, we're proud about our, our education. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Come into the store or reach out in any one of these avenues, and we will do our best to help educate you. Sure. Now, I think I want to wrap this webinar up a little bit. A lot of people ask, uh, where can I get my card? My recommendation is to go to MMTC of Florida. Uh, they'll be able to, to help you with that. We'll send some information as a follow-up. Um, if you look for hemp-derived products, my question is stick with what they call COAs, make sure the certificate of analysis is, is there. Um, and then a lot of physicians will recommend full, full, uh, full spectrum products. We have a store called My Botanical Wellness, which stores hemp-based products. This does not compete with Move. It complements what we're doing. In fact, we used to sell your Move CBD product right, in, in that store. Um, because what we, a lot of patients will say, where do I find a quality hemp product? And what we did was that's why we built the store. We have doctors that actually look at these products. We have, we have pharmacists that evaluate them. And you know if you're buying something from there, it's, it's, it's a quality product. And uh, if you're a first-time buyer, you can get a 20% discount. And from watching this webinar, you get a 10% discount. Um, so I'm going to shamelessly point out we have a new webinar series this quarter. And um, Ron, we're wrapping up this webinar. And next week is one on anxiety and stress. So that should be another hot topic that people will be able to take, take a look at that's out there. So. Absolutely. I, I can't thank you enough again for this opportunity. I, I'm telling you, um, these are great. They're very informative. I, I learn something every time I, I participate in one. So again, thank you for what you do, Mark. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for, 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 for coming in and asking for some great, great questions that, that, uh, of this particular webinar that's here. I want to leave you by saying, look, you're not, you, you, you don't have to get high to use medical cannabis. In fact, the objective is not to do that. You're not going to get addicted. You're not going to overdose. What you are going to get is the entourage effect, which helps you quite a bit, which is very, very positive. So I hope we've answered all of the questions that we, that we brought up. We mentioned in the beginning, we covered a lot of topics tonight. Um, I know it's a fairly long webinar, but thank you very much for your questions. Ron, do you have any final comments you want to bring up? Again, just thank you all for uh, what you do out there. We're available. If you ever have any questions, check us out. Um, but again, whether you come to us or one of my competitors, what I want you to do is have relief. Um, I'm, I'm dedicated the rest of my life to trying to teach everyone and anyone that will listen about the wonderful effects of this plant. So if you haven't discovered it yet, hopefully this was a good first step in that journey. Please. Thank you. Ron, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I know that... Um, this is a question of, that people have is what is medical cannabis? I hope we answered a lot of your questions. Please feel free to send us a, um, a, a question if you still have one after this at event at marijuanaaware.com. You will get an email from us that has the video, has the terminology uh, listing, a copy of the presentation and all the resources that are here. And more importantly, please join us next week for anxiety and stress. Um, I see I, Michelle asked a question real quick and says, I visited Tallahassee store a couple of weeks ago. And I was impressed with the knowledge of the employees. They were very friendly. Uh, Michelle, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's amazing how, I think if I take a look at MOVE, for example, what you've done is a great job of educating your, 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 your people behind the counter. I think you call them bud tenders, right? Yeah, well, they, they, they've changed it. I think we call them cannabis advisors now, but yeah, why well, I always used to call them med tenders. Yeah, I still use old terms. I'm the old guy. 
Yeah, there you go. But seriously, uh, what it does, it does, it does a lot. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Hopefully this has helped you. And please, if you're uh, taking a look at any of the new other conditions like anxiety and stress, please join us next week. We'd like you to be able to join us and be there. Ron, thank you. And thank Move for sponsoring this. And uh, thank everybody for showing up. And I want to thank Lisa um, and also uh, Lee in the background doing the, the commentators that are out there. And one person that helped, came up with the idea of this webinar series, uh, Alyssa Katera, she deserves a great shout out for getting this whole thing started. So listen, everybody have a great weekend. Uh, we hope to see you next week. And thank you very much for joining us. Have an awesome, cool and funny evening, everyone. There you go, Ryan. Thank